Um, my name is Brandon King. I'm from Virginia originally, uh, but I live in Jackson, Mississippi, and that's um, where most of my work is, has been um, for the past, I would say, three and a half, four years. So yeah. So I'm using this clicker thingy, and um, hopefully it'll start. Okay, yeah. Okay, so I'm a farmer. Um, I am a co-anchor for Freedom Farms Urban Farming Cooperative um, in Jackson, Mississippi, and I'm also a DJ. So, farmer DJ Brandon King, aka my DJ name is Leon Gray. So yeah, that's how I introduce myself. And so, Jackson, Mississippi, I want to give y'all just a bit of a context. I know um, Baba Malik, in the previous session, talked about um, African people's historical relationship to the land, um, but also um, about what their movements have done, um, how you know, folks have migrated up north. Um, what we're dealing with in Jackson is the people who stayed, right? The folks who stayed and faced uh, uh, terror. On a, on, a, on a daily basis um, through Jim Crow um, and through just a, a system that didn't um, see their humanity, right? And so um, with, this, this, uh, with folks staying, it also meant that people have um, a tremendous amount of resilience, a tremendous amount of uh, ability to do a lot with the very, very little. Um, I come out of... Uh, uh, this movement called the Malcolm X Grassroots Movement out of the New African um, Independence Movement. And uh, the plan for Jackson is, is primarily uh, because black people in the U.S. Uh, have traditionally, historically worked the lands in the South, uh, we believe that we have legitimate um, claims to land. Um, but those claims to land do not go above and beyond indigenous claims, right? Um, we recognize uh, the independence and the sovereignty and self-determination of indigenous nations as well as, uh, and we fight for their um, self-determination and sovereignty in the same vein as we fight for ours. And so, um, one of the, one of the, a couple of the different ways that we see going about it, one is, uh, is doing participatory democracy, so people's assemblies. Another way is uh, trying to create an independent political vehicle and um, building a solidarity economy. And so this is an example, just, you know, circle kind of fishbowl style, um, people engaging in, in conversation. Um, Mississippi um, has the largest black population. It's also the, the poorest state in the country. It also has some of the highest health disparities in the country, and it has the second highest inca incarceration right in the country um, behind Louisiana. And, then, and if, I don't know if you know, the U.S. has one-fourth of the world's prison population. And so that's a lot of people. And the majority of the, the people that are in those prisons are, um, are black people. Um, and so the, the organization I'm a part of is called Cooperation Jackson. And what we do, um, we're a network of uh, worker-owned uh, cooperatives that are aimed at building economic democracy. Um, and, and we see that happening by us being in control of our own labor. Um, and, and to do that, we also see that it's important to do uh, businesses that are important for our lives. And so the, the different uh, co-ops that we, we, kind of, we came up with, you know, it's Freedom Farms, Urban Farming Cooperative, we got Nubius Cafe. We have the green team is composting and land, landscaping cooperative. Um, and so what happens is the food that we grow, it services Nubius Place, right? Whatever refuse that comes from Nubius Place um, goes to the green team, and the green team makes that into compost. And the compost goes back to the farm, right? Um, and so... Another aspect uh, that, we're, that we have, um, we, we want to build a sustainable community, and we see that um, by having a, a local network of worker cooperatives, um, you know, the cooperatives that I described, but also revolutionary arts and residents. 
um, which I'm a part of. I'm the resident DJ. <laughs> um, uh, as a part of an eco-village uh, that is on top of a community land trust. The goal is to take the housing and the land off of the, the market so that people who exist in the community will be able to stay. Um, because there's, there's impending threat of gentrification. Similar to Detroit, Jackson, Mississippi is majority black population, uh, around 200,000 people um, that's surrounded by majority white um, counties. And these counties uh, have a vested interest um, and historically have had a vested interest on um, extracting our labor and extracting our resources. So, so Jackson as a city is a city that looks kind of gutted out, right? And our goal is to, to revitalize the city, um, but to do it through a way in which people are engaged in, um, in building their community and, and deciding our own destiny, right? And so um, this is all also connected to, I'm kind of jumping around a bit. Uh, it's also connected to, like I said before, the uh, New African Independence Movement. And so this guy right here, Shokwe Lumumba, Baba Shokwe, rest in peace, uh, was uh, the mayor of Jackson uh, back in, in 2014, and he was the third black mayor of Jackson, Mississippi. You know, so it's like we're in 2017 and we're, all, we're still having first kind of things, right? Um, but he came out of it with the People's Platform. And if you fast forward, his son uh, just became mayor uh, this past Monday. Uh, he was, his inauguration happened uh, this past Monday. So he comes out of this movement that, uh, that believes that our folks um, need, should be self-determined and uh, should have the capacity, should have the ability to be able to, to self-govern and, um, and to control our resources and to do it in a way that is most equitable, right? And so some of the ideas that we have for the city is to make Jackson a solidarity city, um, you know, so supporting cooperative development to do a fab city. If, if, I don't know if you're familiar, familiar with digital fabrication and um, having that as, a, as an aspect of community production uh, to make it a sustainable city, you know, zero waste, a uh, goal of zero waste by the year 2025. Um, but also human rights. Um, I believe Baba Malik was bringing up uh, how, you know, it's important for us for our humanity to be actualized, right? And so these are, these are some different ideas that we have um, that we want to bring to the city and to, to push to scale. Uh, right now, our operations are, are focused in West Jackson, um, but with, uh, with Shokwe Antar Lumumba being elected mayor, there's possibility for these type of ideas to, to reach beyond just West Jackson, but throughout the whole city. Okay, so I'll just back up again. Here, so we talk about the climate, we talk about sustainability. We want to uh, be able to um, continue to have uh, next generations, you know, on this planet. Um, and if the carbon level continues to go up, I feel like the planet will be here. I'm not sure that we will be, you know, and so that's really important. We came uh, to Paris and to France in uh, 2015 as a part of the climate talks um, to push the international uh, community to, um, to, to seriously address the climate uh, crisis. Uh, one of the things that we're doing, uh, we have, uh, we installed solar on our, on our, on our center, and um, it actually accounts for uh, close to 40% of our, of our energy. Um, if we had more space on top of the building, it, it, could, it, it probably could have incorporated more. And that's the front of the Lumumba Center. Lumumba Center for Economic Democracy and Development. Um, this is the place where we do um, co-op incubation. We also do um, community programming, um, inter entertainment, uh, and um, political education. Uh, those are different aspects that we, um, we have with the center. And I showed you all about the co-ops. And so, yeah, one of the things is uh, creating a sustainable community is trying to figure out different ways to be able to de-link from the current kind of economic uh, capitalist mode of production uh, to do things in a way that, um, that affirms life and affirms human rights. Uh, and some of the different ideas that come about, we, we, th we think about time banking, uh, about community energy, uh, 
having just transition policy, um, doing the work of cooperatives, um, and also like alternative currency. Uh, if the U.S. is going down, you know, in terms of, or just not to be uh, beholden to uh, outside markets that really affect our lives. Um, and so to be able to have some alternative currency where we can exchange and, and, that, and, and, that, uh, and those resources stay local can really help to benefit um, our, our local conditions and our local situation. Okay, and so another aspect that we're incorporating into our cooperatives is a cooperative about community production. Um, the goal of this cooperative is to use um, uh, digital fabrication technology um, to be able to, to, to add more value um, to the cooperatives that we currently have. So an example would be um, with Freedom Farms. We could uh, use digital fabrication to come up with aquaponics systems. Um, We've seen that in uh, Detroit, we've seen that in Barcelona, um, we see that happening here. Uh, another aspect is housing. You know, we're talking about community land trust, um, and to be able to, to make housing that is, is really, really affordable, um, and to do it in a way that um, the community is actually producing it. Um, I know one of the big things that the, is like a, a argument or like something that happens with the left, you know, it's always like, we gotta, let's seize the means of production. You know, I think um, with this, you know, with digital fabrication, it offers an opportunity to kind of like sideswipe that and just start creating your means of production um, by yourselves or with your community, right? And so we're, we're engaged in that process. I, I wouldn't say that um, the means of production uh, don't need to be addressed because they totally do, um, because they're taking a lot from, from our communities. Um, and at the same time, it's important for us to build, build for ourselves. Okay, and so this building right here is right across from the Lumumba Center, and this is going to be the Future Community um, Production uh, Center, the, <laughs> the Future Center for Community Production. Okay, and so, um, you know, one of the things that I think is important is that, um, is that in building what we're building, it's, it's a two-pronged kind of thing. It's, uh, it's us um, fighting against kind of the regressive um, aspects that exist in the state, that exist in our country, uh, with, with Donald Trump being the president. Uh, Governor uh, Phil Bryan is actually really close friends with Donald Trump. He comes out of the Tea Party. Um, so when I'm talking about the um, surrounding areas that um, are majority white, a lot of those folks hold those politics, right? And so um, I feel like it's important that I'm here um, to be able to link with other progressive people in other cities so that we can become a network to be able to support one another and to be able to troubleshoot. Um, some, some of the similar problems that Detroit had, um, Jackson is facing. Um, there's, a, there's a threat around uh, regional control over the water. Um, they, there was a bill that was just passed that um, the state now controls our downtown area that controls 90% of our, um, that has 90% of the jobs. Um, the state also tried to take control over our airport that was actually operating um, in the black, you know, for one of the first times. Um, and so all of these different kinds of things creates a situation where someone who may have um, very progressive or revolutionary politics um, to come into office and not really have space to move anything because the city is in debt, the state is in debt, and the state is trying to take from. Um, and so a, a, a position of, of being, a, being half, having to be the administrators of austerity is a serious um, concern. Uh, so these are our people. These are uh, some of the core people from Cooperation Jackson. And, um, and yeah, we, we're, we're building our community uh, slowly but surely. We're making mistakes, and, uh, you know, hopefully we're making better mistakes as we, we go along. I got about a minute left. Um, I was wondering if anyone had a question would like to ask. And if you don't have questions or you have questions, too shy, 
you can um, uh, come up later. Okay, um, so we're part of the National Black Food Justice Alliance, uh, also a part of the Climate Justice Alliance. Uh, they were a group that, um, that also helped us uh, come to Paris and um, be a part of the climate talks. Um, we're part of the, Southern, the Federation of Southern Cooperatives and the Mississippi Association of Cooperatives. That has a rich history um, in that, uh, okay, yeah, got three minutes. And that uh, back in the day, like, doing co-ops was actually like a part of the civil rights movement. Um, but that's something that we're not taught. Uh, when, when people lost their jobs for going out to vote, um, it was actually the, the black uh, um, food cooperatives that, that kind of put people, put people on. And this aspect, they were like the economic wing of the, the civil rights movement. Um, and I, I think, and, and that history is something that, we're, um, that we take on and we want to share. And we also want to help to continue um, in that, like, we're, um, we're fighting for our lives. We're fighting for our, um, our ability to, 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 to be truly human, you know, for our humanity to, to be truly actualized. And uh, so, yeah, I thank you. And um, I hope uh, to hear from you. Uh, yeah. <laughs> All right.